How's it going everyone? Welcome to our Euroforce channel where we're going to talk everything Toyota off-road. Today I'm in Colorado for the Overland Expo Mountain West and I'm going to be showing you the top five Toyotas at the Expo. Let's get started. All right fellas, right now we're here with Nick. He's a retired Marine. It's insane how badass he is and his story is just something that I really want to be able to share with you guys. So we're actually going to be doing an in-depth video with Nick in the next couple days where I'm going to be going through that story. But for now, real quick, we're just going to do a quick build walk around. Okay. Nick, how's it going, man? Dude, Thank great. you so much for Thanks everything so that you've done tail. for us. Yeah. So we got a 2019 SR5 True Max Tundra and we have totally built it out as a overland rig. How long have you had it for? Since 2019. The purpose of the build was I always felt like the Tacomas are just too small. I, you know, I have two little girls. I wanted something to be able to take them anywhere and then really kind of going with you know our business growing with Mountain Yodas we just thought of ways that we could make this a really cool fun build you know something that represented me pretty well and that's why I kind of made it look like a, uh, a tactical tank yeah. you know something like that that's you awesome. know just wanted something to kind of showcase all that. That's sick, dude. What do you have for your front bumper? The front bumper, we have the Pro Bolt-On ADD. They discontinued it. So uh, right now we're actually gonna probably put on something else just to kind of give it a meatier look to match the rest of the build. Dude, it's looking good. I love the Baja design uh, pods yep. there. Really adds a nice touch to it. What about uh, headlights? Headlights, Alpha Rex. These ones, we might upgrade to the new ones that they have that uh, you could change from white to amber. Uh, so it talks about doing that, but these are great. I think Alpha X are some of the best. What do you think about their light output? A lot of people going after market headlights, they kind of freak out with, ah, man, do I want to do it? Is it going to be better than I factory? think it's awesome. I think they do a great job. And, you know, when you have everything, obviously my driving with everything lit up, but man, uh, brighter the better. What about for suspension? King Shocks adjustable 2.5s. They ride great. You know, right now I only have a, had a leaf, believe it or not. I got to upgrade the leaf package in the back, but that's going to be night and day, man, when you do that. Night and like, day difference. I mean, when you're on Kings, it's, you know, it's the best. Uh, we are going to, when goat shocks get released, though, we are going to uh, add the goat shocks onto the, um, onto the build, and I'm sure these Kings will be gone in a day. I am so excited for those shocks to come out, guys. Goat shocks, make sure to stay tuned. They have coils that glow in the dark, and from what I've heard, the performance is going to be amazing. Yeah, so, we got a lot of guys testing them right now, and yeah. we're getting a lot of really good feedback on them. Dude, so let's move on to the back. Yeah. What do you have for sliders? Sliders, we got the Cali Raised. Do great off-roading. I mean, man, I, uh, they're great. What about the uh, wheels and tires? 18 inch wheels, black rhinos. The Wild Pick RTs, those are the brand new ones that just came out. It's a hybrid between an all-terrain and a mud terrain. And really, I can't wait to test them out in the snow, but we've gone, taken them off wheeling, went pretty hard on them. All right, man, let's move on to the back. I see you have something going on back here. So this is the flatbed system from Dirtbox Overland and it has a half box, 28 gallon, I believe, water tank that goes within it. So, 28 gallon water exactly. tank. Exactly, so what you can do is you can open this up, you can set up a molly panel system, you can set up however you want, everything's fully modular. So what I plan on doing is setting up a molly system inside, basket for, we have a 2000 watt Blue Eddy battery that has a switch box in the box here. And that will, you know, once I hook it up to the battery, I can power everything, whereas lighting, uh, the water pump to, actually get the water out you know it comes with a hose and you can spray that out so That's um, amazing shower yeah. wash the dishes yeah exactly and so what's cool is it's all aluminum so it's only 300 pounds you could actually take this off and just run a true flatbed if i wanted to and then up there you have a free spirit yeah free spirit odyssey what's so awesome about this it gives us plenty of room me and my girlfriend we sleep in there very comfortably i can even have my little girls up there with us and what's awesome is it has so much ventilation in there so if you're getting really hot there's plenty of room for all the air to flow through and then when you zip it up when you're waking up in the morning it is still dark oh, so there's amazing. tons of you know uh, that will wake you up man if your tent's light yep. like those red ones or orange ones yeah. you're waking up the second the sun comes oh, out. oh yeah. yeah not us <laughs> <laughs> and then what do you have for your roof rack uh, sherpa best in the business if you climb up on the sliders you can actually see that i have a dat plates that they made so it's a full platform on top of the truck so i have a front porch when i walk out of my tent and what's cool with that here in colorado we've been getting tons of hail well i haven't had to worry about that because i got full armor on top dude that is amazing that's pretty cool that is so cool that's the first time i've seen something that plated before yeah we, it was cool when we went up to swing arm city we parked at the edge of a cliff and we have shots of us just out there on a swinging chair oh, that's amazing. enjoying the view <laughs> 
Hell yeah. Thanks, dude. Hey, Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Awesome. And guys, make sure to stay tuned. Like I said, this man right here is insane how badass he is and what he's done for this country. I cannot wait to tell his story. Go out camping with him. Just vibe next to a campfire and uh, tell you guys his story. It's going to be wild. All right, fellas. Now I'm here with Alex from Sherpa Racks. Dude, thanks for having me, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. I've been fanning out about your Forerunner for a while now. I know you race. Yep. What races do you guys do with this Forerunner? So we race this thing in Ultra 4, uh, 4600 class. So it's the stock class in Ultra 4, but we race it in California, Montana. We've gone down to Oklahoma. We've gone out east. So pretty much all over the country. Dude, what got you to be passionate about that? Early on when I was young, I used to actually go out and shoot media for races. Uh, my business partner at Sherpa got me into that early on. and. Through Sherpa, it was kind of a door for us to get into racing. We figured what better way to test our product than to go beat on it on a race car. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Do you mind if we do a quick little walk around? Start Absolutely. from the front, work our way to the back? Yeah. Cool, what do you have for the front bumper? So the front bumper on this truck, this is the Addicted Off-Road Hybrid Bumper. Um, this is from Scotty up in Wyoming. We've had a lot of his armor on our old trucks uh, early on, so it was a no-brainer for us to go work with him. It's super high and tight, and in racing, we want ground clearance. So that good approach angle on this is what we were looking for. What about lighting? Do you guys race at night? Uh, we don't race much at night, but dust is a huge issue when we're racing. So we work with Baja Designs for all of our lighting. We have LP9 Pros on the front. We have XL80s on the ditch lights, and then we have some more lighting up on the roof rack as well. Hell yeah, I see you have a winch here. Yep. Different from the Baja world, which I've been kind of shooting a lot lately. Yeah. You know, uh, the trophy trucks don't have winches, right? But yep. that's interesting to see. You guys got to do recoveries on the trail as you're doing the race. Yeah, so a good bit of what Ultra 4 is, is it's a lot of desert racing, but it's also rock crawling as well. So we get into some nasty trails, and in our class, with our small tire size, we have to have winches. There's a lot of obstacles that we can't just drive up, and we need to pull winch to get ourselves out of the mess. Dang. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's a, you got to be quick with that, too. Yeah, so that's why we went with a really nice winch. That's the Warren Xeon 10S. So oh, cool. it's that's got a yeah Bluetooth too. remote so we can run it from inside the truck. You don't need to plug anything in. And it's incredibly fast, which is important, too. Yeah. What about uh, wheels and tires? What size are they and what uh, brand? Yeah, so we are running 35-inch tires. That's part of the class rules. Um, we can't go any bigger than a 35. It also has to be a DOT tire. So these are the Kenda MTs. Um, it's one of their new tires, and we also got the red letters, which honors their racing heritage. Kenda's been doing a lot of off-road racing for a while, um, mostly short course, but they're getting into more of this stuff as well. And then as far as the wheels, this is a 17-inch Sahara Forge Beadlock from Nomad. Uh, it's an unreleased wheel. We just threw them on the truck, so as you can see, they're really pretty right now. But we're going to destroy these things in the rocks and put them through some gnarly Dude, testing. They look awesome. Yeah. How long do your tires last? With this car, being that it's a pretty low horsepower uh, rig, we can usually get two races out of a set of tires before we usually have to swap the rears out. The rears get chewed up pretty good, just on limit or bouncing through some stuff every now and then. But yeah, usually two races. And that's something that we've found with the Kendas that's been really nice. We've had tires in the past that we're swapping every race, and sometimes we'd get flats pretty often, and we've had no issues with the Kenda so far. This is our first season racing on them, so we'll see as we do more races how they continue to perform, but I've been incredibly stoked on their performance. Dude, and you said the engine is stock, right? Yeah, so this is the factory 4.7 V8, and that's one of the reasons we went with this platform is to get the V8 in there. Uh, we've done headers on it. We did Doug Thorley long tube headers, and then we've done a cold air intake. But outside of that, we change the oil and never touch it. Are you allowed to do supercharger turbos on it, or is it against the rules? It's it's a new thing. Early on, it was basically like no forced induction unless it came factory with it. Yeah. But now they're kind of going back on that and saying, since it was a dealer add-on, you could do the Magnuson supercharger. Oh. We might be able to do it. But I'm a little nervous with the 4.7. This motor does have the joke of glass rods. Yeah. So with forced induction, we might need to update all of that stuff. And it's also going to get rid of a little bit of that reliability that we love about the 4.7 and its stock configuration. We can beat on this motor and not have to worry about it. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm so jealous that you four runner owners got that engine. Yeah. Uh, the Tacoma should have gotten it. It's an easy swap if you have the time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's move on to the back, man. Yeah, so absolutely. this thing is fully caged, right? Yeah, so we built a full internal roll cage. It's two inch, uh, 120 wall steel. Um, I actually learned to fabricate on this truck. I had no previous experience outside of like some small bracketry welding up exhaust. So yeah, I dove into this. My first tube project was building this rear bumper back here. And then I took what I learned and the mistakes I made on that 
and applied it into here and we knocked this cage out in two and a half weeks. Dude, if you're gonna put your life behind that wheel, you wanna make sure those welds are grabbing it like yeah. as strong as possible. And that was something I spent a lot of time learning, making sure my welds were good. And then these cages actually get inspected by USAC before okay. we race. So this cage fully passed tech. So it was really a rewarding experience for me to build a roll cage that passes tech and contingency That's and amazing. that keeps us safe while we're racing. Dude, this is the first time that I see a race vehicle with an awning yes right this is crazy yeah <laughs> yeah so, carter talked us into that at nomad um we've actually done races with rooftop tents and stuff like that just to showcase the strength of our rack and the quality that we built into them and uh he needed some shade and some cover from the rain out at the event so it was easy for us to just throw a roam awning up on our awning brackets and keep them covered dude you finish the race get first place and then you yeah. just chill here in the awning yeah That's we did a race up in montana and uh one of our pit guys actually slept in the rooftop tent on the race truck every single night no way. yep that's crazy. Yeah, it was a good time. So you got a roll cage, right? You guys obviously manufacture the roof racks, yep. nice and sturdy roof rack. Yeah. What else can you tell me about this truck? Yeah, you got I mean, sliders. We got some rock sliders that look like pool noodles now. Oh we have absolutely destroyed the undercarriage on this truck, but the suspension is something that we've spent a ton of time dialing in on this truck. What do you have for suspension? Up front here, we have the Marlin Crawler RCLT HD, which is a pretty new kit as far as uh, long travels go. Um, but this kit is fully designed about rock crawling. So not only does it do the desert application really well, it's uh, three and a half inches wider. They also make a two and three quarter kit, but we're running the three and a half uh, eight inch coilover. And these uh, coilovers are from Icon. It's their CDEV technology. So it automatically adjusts the valving based off of G-force inputs. So we have a computer under the hood that's constantly adjusting our valving as we're bouncing through whoops, going off jumps, and it's stiffening and uh, loosening the shocks for us. Dude, that's amazing. Yep. And then to, to be able to run the tire and through the travel, you guys got fiberglass yep. fenders, right? These yeah, are a these lot are wider. From, yeah, we're running the ADV fiberglass up here just to give us a little bit more room for the tire and also just to keep dirt and mud and rocks from coming into the truck. We don't have a windshield or windows anymore. Oh, so keeping the spray down when we get into water is important. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. What about for the back? Uh, suspension wise, you also have Icon, yep. I'm, I'm imagining. Yep, so we're running a 12 inch, two and a half smooth body shock, the same uh, CDEV technology back here. We also have two by two hydro bumps front and rear. And then as far as the link setup, it's a custom four link that we built ourselves. So we went in, learned suspension geometry, uh, mocked the whole thing up in the computer, and then we designed and built the rear links ourselves. Hell yeah, dude, I yep. noticed right now that you, are those spacers in the back? This is a four nine inch rear axle. It's actually a trail gear axle housing, and then we did spider tracks, um, 35 spline unit bearings, and axle shafts. Dude. So it's a really beefy rear axle that we can pretty much beat on consistently, and we're never gonna have issues with it. That's amazing, yeah. that's candy right there. Yeah. This is where you fill it up? Yep, so we have a fuel cell in the back. So with the four link, we had to relocate our fuel tank. And that's also something we have to do with the rules for racing just to keep everything safe. So we have a fuel cell back here. We have a firewall that protects us, um, aftermarket fuel pump. We have two fuel pumps. So a little bit of redundancy there. If one fuel pump fails, we can just turn it off and switch to another one. No way. Yeah. Genius. Yep. And then we also brought our spare tire back here and kicked it out a little bit. Um, we have a half door on our hatch here, so the top half of our hatch opens, yeah. but we just wanted to open this all up and uh, stick the bumper out so if we get bumped in a race or rear-ended, it's not smashing into the truck as hard and we have protection back here. Dude, I love how easy you guys have access to this mm -hmm. tire. Like, yeah. that is crucial. Just being able to like remove it and put the yeah. other one, and the, you don't realize how heavy they are. Until no, this is a heavy it. wheel and tire setup, yeah. especially once you get into these bigger, heavier beadlocks. Uh, thankfully, Nomad's beadlock is on the lighter side for a forged beadlock, but we've had wheel and tire combos that are close to 150 pounds on a 35. Yeah, dude, I believe you, man. Yeah. Racing is tough. Mm -hmm. Do you love it? I love it. You gotta it's, love it to do it. It's a drug. It's very addicting. Uh, it's expensive, but it's the best networking, the best learning, and it's incredibly rewarding. So where are you guys at right now when it comes to racing, like as far as it, whether you're yeah. in a tournament, and where do you want to go? So last year, we had a really aggressive season. We pushed really hard for championship points, and we ended up, uh, I believe, fifth last year off the top of my head. And this year, we took a little bit of a quieter season. We focused more on the business and uh, perfecting our manufacturing and getting all that stuff dialed in. And we hope next year that we can have a, a pretty full season again. But we raced hammers already. We raced up in Montana. And then we're going to be out at Ultra Four Nationals in Havasu. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. So that's in October. I wish you the best, man. Thank yeah. you so much for this walk, Thank man. This much. is so rad. We share a passion, man. Yeah. That's I'm awesome. Excited to see your build. Hell yeah. Now. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Dude, we can be a team, man. You Absolutely. never know. <laughs> you got that on camera. <laughs> All right, fellas. Right now I'm here with Wes from C4 Fabrication. He's got himself an insane Land Cruiser. This is an 80 series, correct? Yes, this is a 1996 Toyota FZJ80. Dude, this thing is insane and it's slowly starting to become a popular vehicle among the off, uh, overlanding community, right? Yeah. It gets a lot of attention just for how crazy it's built, I think. So. How hard is it to obtain this vehicle? They're getting harder and harder to find, man. When I was originally looking for one about two years ago, gosh, I searched for like four or five months and I wanted a clean one under 200K kind of stock. And um, I located one in California that was basically an original owner, no window way. sticker, binder full of service records. No. And the ideal scenario. Exactly, man. I trailered it to South Dakota and I started going a little too crazy with it, I guess. I remember when you, you were in the first stages and I got inside, you allowed me to get inside this vehicle and I was just amazed at how, the, how pristine the condition oh, was. It was crazy clean when I got it. And I've upgraded some stuff inside and I love it, man. It's, yeah, it's great. You mind if we walk around? Yeah, let's do it. So what do you have for the front bumper? So front bumper is a descent off-road. They're based out of Colfax, California. They do tons of Land Cruiser stuff. I kind of like how it's a little bit more high clearance than like an ARB, but you still have triple hoops. It has that classic Land Cruiser feel. It's outfitted with a ton of Baja design stuff. Dude, that's crazy to see LP9, such a modern light on such a classic vehicle. Yeah. It looks so good. Yeah, I think it gives it a great look. What winch are you rocking right now? So I have a Smittybill X20 Gen 3, their newer synthetic winch. Have you had to use it yet? I know you've been willing to I've used hard it lately. a few times. Yeah, it's worked great. So no issues there. It fits nice in the bumper. What about the uh, suspension? What do we got down here? Yeah, so, so we got a lot going on for suspension. Not too long ago, I installed a full three link kit up front from four wheel underground. So they make a pretty much ready to go 80 series three link. And there's a lot of options, but mine, I went with a different knuckle and then I have high steer, hydro assist steering, 14 inch rad flow coilovers, hydro bumps. So dude, that sounds expensive. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't cheap. I'll just say that. Um, there's a lot going on, but man, it wheels so good now. Oh, I'm so stoked with it. I just got it trussed, did knuckle gussets, like really beefed up the front axle housing. So. I'm good to go. It's not gonna bend, yeah. I can beat on it, not have to worry about it. Didn't you have uh, Dobinson's coils before? Uh, yeah, so Dobinson makes great suspension for these things. I had their adjustable MRR shocks up front and springs. Went to the coil over, so I went rad flow, but I still have Dobinson stuff in the rear right now, okay. so. And then what about these sliders? These are sick, man. I love yeah, the, so the top plate cool. on these. One of the only things that was actually on the truck when I bought it that I haven't pulled off. So these are white knuckle off-road sliders. Ah, no. Yep, I think they're based in California too, but they I've slammed on them tons of times. They've held up great. So, yeah. all right, man, what do you have for your roof rack? Yeah, so right now I have a Rhino Rack Pioneer V2 platform rack. I like how flat these are. It kind of gives it an Australian feel. But now that I don't have a tent, man, I've been debating just ripping it off and going not bald not on top. And not I actually it. like how it looks, man. I yeah, think you yeah, went with a nice point. classic look. It does. You know, going with a modern look on this one, yeah. it might throw it off. The only hesitancy I've had is I've been wheeling in the hills a couple times and lean the rack right up against trees. So it does offer a little bit of protection of, against the roof getting smashed. Dude, I've so. heard about guys flipping over and their racks was like the roof one thing that like damage. saved yeah. them. Yeah. So nuts. We'll see. I'm undecided. What about the interior, man? I really want to make sure we don't skip because I know yeah. you have some insane seats. Yeah. So take a look at the interior. I went with some Shieldman seats. Planted actually Planted makes a bracket that just bolts right in. So no modification, you can bolt in these Shieldmans. I have some wits end stuff for like dash mounted accessories so I can put my phone and GMRS radio in there. And Did you drive this uh, rig here? No, it was actually in California getting the new rear bumper on. So they, they brought it up on a trailer, but I'll be driving it home and yeah. I can't wait to go bash on it some more with the new bumper Dude, on. So. Talking about driving it on the road, these tires are massive. How do they ride on the road and yeah. what size are they? Yeah, so these are 37 by 12 and a half inch Toyo MT tires. I've gone through a couple different sets of MTs. I really love the Toyos. They're soft, they're not very loud, they have great traction off-road. They have had zero issues, so they're great. These are true beadlocks? True beadlocks, yep, so these are KMC tanks. 
the 80s have a really big hub diameter in the front and rear so a lot of guys run into issues with wheel selection they have to like basically mill out the face of their wheel to fit over the hub of the 80. so these tanks were like a true 108 bore all the way through and i could just slap them on there that's good to know man yeah. i've been having a hard time finding wheels for my 1981 yeah. pickup you got to pay attention to like the true hub size on the older trucks but i mean the b-lock rings have obviously taken some damage held up great yeah, so, dude, you, you can tell that you've been wheeling it hard. They've been doing awesome. What's this window here? Yeah, so uh, it's locked. I'll get the keys. But this is brand new gold wings I just put on by a company in California called Solve Function. They're one of the only companies that makes like an acrylic window that almost looks like OEM glass. I love the look of it. So pop both of these. It's lockable. Gold wing pops up. You can access anything you have in the back without opening your hatch. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. So I usually mount my power tank right here on that bracket so i can air up and air down it'll be nice just to pop that open grab my chuck air up dude that's so. sick that is that that is a setup yeah. i like and you have it on both sides both sides yep that's incredible now what do you have back here so this is a full drawer setup from a colorado company called air down gear up amazing drawers there i've had some custom stuff that i built with a buddy these things do not rattle at all they've thought of like look at these d-ring retainers man they they hold the D-ring in place so yeah. they don't rattle like 3D oh, printed man. stuff. They have tons of options. So this is kind of like their kitchen setup. I got to show you this actually. Fridge. Dude, that looks super sturdy. Secondary drawer. Nah. <laughs> Cooking surface. So no way. Normally I'll throw like a two burner in here yeah. and then you're just good. The other drawer I'll keep like recovery gear Dude, and Dude, you got your whole setup right whole here. Whole setup, man. Fridge right here. Yeah start cooking up that lobster tail that I love to do out in the wild. And then I have a dual battery on the 80. So you can Turn on check your out your voltage of the dual battery. Fridge plugs in right here. You can charge your phone or whatever if I'm sleeping in the rig. So this is actually, you fold that middle seat down, that's a sleeping platform. No so way. They have some rad stuff. Definitely worth checking them out. Have you slept there already? Yeah. So you just put a mattress on. I have a little air mattress I throw down, sleeping bag. You don't wow. need a rooftop tent. No, man, no rooftop tent. Dude, the ultimate wheeler. Yeah. Holy cow, That's this thing is bad. sick. Did I miss anything? The new rear bumper, dude. Oh, the new rear bumper. So, oh, I saw pictures of this. This yeah. is clean. Descent just built this for me. Um, last time I was wheeling in Moab, I was getting hung up on my rear bumper a lot. And Moab's a little weird, you know, you're really high pitch angles, good traction. So you can get in some tight spots, but they did a frame chop bumper on this thing. So if you get under, you can actually see they, they cut the frame at an angle almost up to the body mount and then re-welded and braced in a new cross member. This bumper, I think if it's like a production bumper is the highest clearest bumper ever made for a Land Cruiser that I know of. So, I mean, the departure angle now from tires to the edge of this thing is unreal. I, I can't wait to get it out and, and wheel it again. It's so clean too. Like, yeah. You get, you get the performance out of it and you get the looks. Yep, still get your recovery points, still have your hitch. It, they did a great job. He's killing it. Oh, they have rad stuff, absolutely. Hell yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much for showing me around. This rig, this rig is so freaking awesome. Yeah, thanks for checking it out, guys. I got to go wheeling with him one of these days. We do. We absolutely do. Let's do it. Thanks, dude. No problem. All right, now I'm here with Spencer. How's it going, Spencer? How good, are you, man? man? How are you? Doing good, good man. I'm again. excited to walk around your uh, Sequoia. Sure. This is a vehicle that I'm actually thinking about uh, buying for sure. my fiance. So yeah, I'm stoked, dude. Absolutely, it's a great vehicle, man. You it like really it is. So I love it. How's the transmission? How's the drive with the big tires? What size tires are these? So we're sitting on 37 by 1150s, uh, wrapped around a RRW7 Relation Race Wheel 7. It's it's solid. It, it doesn't it have works trouble. really just... well. No, it, I mean, the power delivery on these new Sequoias with a twin turbo hybrid, it uh it would have decimated my 2021 tundra um the v8 it's the power is just so linear you there's no issues at all you even. didn't even have to re-gear no no re-gears no nothing yet um obviously there's a lot of things that are still in development with it but uh as as we go along and as people are pushing new products we'll we'll get that yep. eventually once you go up in tire diameter you want to re-gear yep so uh but just knowing that it's not struggling with it exactly. is amazing yeah no no issues at all the braking power is still phenomenal too so um, it's it's with all the armor and everything. It's it scoots. That's awesome. What do you have for the suspension? Suspension we're running uh, locked off road, which is a smaller suspension company out of Florida. Uh, Riley over at Locked. We kind of went back and forward, and we got to a point where we wanted to figure out if uh, Tundra suspension would kind of be compatible with this. And he sent some out, and 
it's been experimenting ever since. So That's awesome. yeah, it's, it's definitely nice. Locked off road also for the back? Locked off road for the back with some Dobinson springs. We've got the uh, Dobinson 440 pound consistent load rated three inch spring for the rear. And uh, that's mainly for the swing outs and with the hybrid battery being in the rear, it, it'll help with uh, keeping the rear end up a little bit more yeah, set of saggings. Yeah. All right, so right now you guys can hear the hybrid on. I just uh, asked Spencer, I'm like, what's that sound? You know, all this new hybrid stuff, it, it'll, it'll hit you by surprise. It does, it gets really quiet. And actually the TRD Pro exhaust on these, uh, these third gen Sequoias, they're phenomenal. It's got a nice rumble to it and it, it sounds great. But yeah, right now it's on uh, just as we can display some of our lighting. Um, with the Baja Designs guys as well as Alpha Rex. So. Dude, these Baja Design lights are awesome. They're great, man. And, and the Alpha Rex are great too. I mean, they really uh, really kind of add a good flair to the vehicle. Are these the Lux or the Nova? These are the Novas. So the, they've got the Novas, the Nova Blacks, and a couple other ones. These are just the regular Novas. So it's got, it's not tinted here on the bottom, nor is this tinted up top. And then the uh, actual jewel in the back is a chrome. So, so it bright, adds guys. a pop. It's very bright, yep. What about for the front bumper? Front bumper, we're running CBI. So believe it or not, this is actually for a 2022 Tundra. And again, with the experimenting and building a Sequoia, we wanted to see what would fit and uh, how we were gonna get it to fit if it could. So uh, CBI was generous enough to kind of hook us up for armor and build this out. And it, so far it's been great. Now on the Tundra though, I will say it comes straight down underneath the headlight. Yeah. The Sequoia actually bulges out. So we had a little bit of contact here, but that's been the only issue so far. And we're working with CBI right now to try and get that under wraps. Dude, one thing that's amazing is your sensors stay. Sure, yep, all the sensors. And we've had no issues with the sensors as far as the front goes. The rear is another story, but we can talk about that definitely. Hell yeah, let's go on to the back. Sure. So I see you also have Total Chaos uppers. I do, yep. So we're running to Total Chaos uppers, just the uppers for now. There's not many people that have done LCAs for these yet. Nobody's really revamped anything or built product for them. So we're kind of uh, in the experimenting phase as far as the build goes. I love it, dude. It's, it's so fun. new. This vehicle, I like to call it the Escalade of Overlanding. It it's is. so fancy. It's so big, huge, and it makes me want to have it. And there's, <laughs> there's so much new products for it that, uh, like you said, it's in the experimental yep. phase. And, and CBI and I know some other companies are still developing a lot of different products for the Sequoia. And uh, luckily we kind of get to be the guinea pigs on that. So yeah, yeah. it's good fun. What do you have for the roof rack? Roof rack, we're running a Prinsu. So with CBI, we've got the Prinsu roof rack as well. One of the nice things with this is it actually utilizes the uh, factory channel. So where the factory roof rack was, it's just bolts straight so in. You don't There's have to drill anything in No there. drilling, no nothing, and it's a solid rack. It's actually a two-piece design to help with their shipping. Um, so there's a seam right in the center, but it's it's That's absolutely solid. solid, yep. And then up top, we've got our Free Spirit. Uh, this is the new High Country V2 that we're running on this. And that's, uh, it's like, a, probably a little bit bigger than a California King mattress. So, I mean, it's huge. I love how nice the tents fit on the Sequoia, right? And it yep. doesn't it doesn't make it look too bulky on top, which was I was scared of. Sure. It looks perfect. So this tent actually measures at about 10 inches in total for length, which is insane given the space that's inside these tents. It's really cool. What about the sliders? These are kind of steps, right? Yep, so these are actually the TRD Pro steps. Um, this is from factory and they're, they're solid steps. We haven't had any issues with them. As CBI is kind of pushing sliders to the manufacturing process, that then eventually we'll swap them out for something that'll handle rocks a little bit better. Yeah, can you actually slide on these or they're more like a... You could, I yeah. mean, it, it would be better than, than not having them for sure. But uh, yeah, it, it might do some damage to them. I'm, I'm sure of it, but you know, they're, they're still pretty solid. So it'll protect your, the body of your vehicle pretty well, which is nice. Nice, that's good. That's definitely necessary uh, protection. Yes. That's yeah. the first thing you should do. Here in Colorado, especially, it's, it gets pretty wild. Hell yeah. Let's go on to the back. So this is our uh, CBI bumper back here. This is a high clearance bumper. So one of the things with this bumper that created an issue, not necessarily the bumper, but Toyota with these new vehicles, all the technology, the radar sensors in these Sequoias were in the OEM bumpers. It's such a pain. We had to uh, relocate them up here behind the, ted the tail light, which is about a two foot difference almost. So now it throws off some different things. It's an easy fix though. You just take it into Toyota, ask for a recalibration and they'll, they'll fix all the issues. But this bumper is extremely solid and they're actually making bolt out swing outs for these right now. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a game changer. That's gonna sure. be a game changer on yeah. the Sequoia having like dual swing outs. The detail on this uh, rear bumper is phenomenal as well. They did a whole tree scene right here with a big Sequoia right underneath the the oh, uh, lift gate. Oh, I love that. And they still utilize the factory hitch here as well. No, they did not. 
Oh, what? There it is with a nice little CBI cover plate on there. So let me ask you this. You know how I told you that I'm in the market for getting one Absolutely. of these? Absolutely. One thing that threw me off is like this like level board sure. back here. Yep. You know how like in the Ford Expedition or like any other vehicle, when you put your seats down, it becomes kind of like a truck yeah. bed. Flat, yep. Does that, has that bothered you at all? Um, a little bit. As we do have dogs, we've got a couple German Shepherds. Uh, it, it makes it increasingly difficult to get them in here. I know we utilize the third row quite a bit, but those that don't, I believe Goose Gear is actually creating a solution for it. I haven't seen it yet, but a lot of people are talking about removing that seat and kind of making a more flat platform for the rear. So it'd be like a, a enlarged forerunner. Yeah. That's the only thing that's throwing me off from the Sequoia. Sure. The storage definitely lacks in these Sequoias, which is one of the reasons that we went with this tent, because we can actually do a roof rack system on the tent or crossbars. So we could put storage boxes or whatever we may need for the, that. But aside from that, yes, the storage is definitely lacking in these Sequoias in the rear. Dude, let me ask you this. If you could give advice to someone that's fresh into the market, he's getting into this hobby, what advice would you give him? Don't follow social media and the things that everyone else does. Build a vehicle for your own doing. What yeah. your necessity is, is gonna be the most important thing. It's not about what other people think is cool, it's what you need and, and what's gonna benefit you. That's, that's my biggest advice to a build lot of people. Build for your purpose. Absolutely, build for your purpose. Take advice from the people that know, see what works for some, what doesn't work for others, and then see what works for you. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Spencer, thank you so We've much. We've had our man. trial runs, man. So Hell yeah. I appreciate awesome. you. No, Thanks appreciate for coming you. by, man. Good seeing Hell you guys. Yeah. All right, fellas, we're back here with Wes. This time we're at the C4 facility and we're going to be doing a walk around this Tacoma. I love the fact that you guys uh, came up with a new armor line. Yeah. Let's talk about it. What is so, this? So, this is our Rock Runner Series armor. Brand new. We're planning on releasing it around Black Friday. The whole idea behind this armor lineup is higher clearance, lightweight, minimal design for the guys that are really out there wheeling their trucks or just wanna kind of evolve their vehicle to the next step and not have so much weight on the truck. Hell yeah. What's interesting is that you guys also allowed space for a winch, like it's so compressed yep. and I was geeking out with them and one of the things that I absolutely love about this bumper is that they're gonna be able to ship at ground. So you'll be able to save a lot on shipping, am I yeah. right? So it's modular, three pieces, so the wings bolt on. You can actually see looking at the front end, we have a plated side and then a tube side. So we're showcasing both just so you can see the options. But there's a lot of awesome features. Like you said, it's winch compatible right out of the box. Um, we're offering a cross member delete. So normally on these Tacomas, the cross member would hang down, you know, five inches below this. We allow you to delete the cross member, give you a new bolt in cross member, and then we have a higher clearance skid. So this is for the big boys. So boys we, we got options, but this one right here, it's for the guys that really want to get out there. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is their tow hooks are assessed. So as far as approach angle, you get a ton of clearance, which is the whole idea, right? Like get it up, get it high and tight, get it out of the way. So, so let me ask you this, man, because I'm, I'm, I don't know if the camera does this uh, justice. The angle on this, guys, is just insane. Is this skid blade the same one as before? No. Nope. Or it's, it's got to be new, right? Yep, it's completely different. Because normally the skid would bolt onto the cross member down here. Yep. So this skid plate is different. It will still line up with the rest of our full skids. So if you do the cross member delete, you get this skid plate with it, and they'll still work with the rest of the rear skids. Yep. That is beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it has to, right? If not, you're going to have all of this yes. empty. Yeah. If you opt for that cross member delete, you'll get that skid. If you want the bumper and you want to keep your cross member, we give you a little bridge skid plate that'll line up with our current skid. Dude, that's so. amazing. I'm, to I'm totally fanning out about this new uh, Rock Runner lineup. It's mostly designed for rock crawling, right? Like from the name or is it Baja, like yeah. pre-running? What do you- Rock Runner, we kind of wanted to mix, like obviously guys want to get these out in the rocks, beat on them, you have way more clearance, but runner in the sense of lightweight hindsight. If you don't want the winch, we'll actually have an aluminum protection plate that'll cover this hole right here. So I would go that route. You can cover it up. It's kind of two-tone, looks cool. But you can do whatever you want. I, mean, I think it'll be popular. I think the, the trend now is guys want more clearance, less weight. Dude, and that's what we're going to be pushing for too. I think that's genius. Yeah. What about these lights back here? Is this a bracket you guys developed? I love having those light bars. So this is actually SDHQ makes this dual light bar bracket. Um, Obviously this bumper is very minimal, so fitting a light bar is going to be impossible. You would be able to bolt on like LPs or something onto the top, but we want to just showcase the fact that there are other options on the market to get lighting on your truck, even with a bumper like this. So SDHQ makes that bracket. 
What about these headlights, man? What do we have here? We have Alpha X headlights, sequential LED, super bright. They're have awesome. you driven this truck with these lights on? I haven't at night yet. Just turned on, like seen the startup sequence. They're pretty rad. Get ready, man. These things are bright. Oh, I bet. What about the suspension? I see you have an RCLT yeah. uh, lower control arms. So the suspension's crazy. Marlin crawler is like full long travel kit. Um, so does it come with this spindle, man? This spindle is beefy. Yep. Spindle, upper lower control arms, RCV axles. We did rad flow coilovers in the front. Um, limit straps, gosh, you name it. There's so much going on. It's like even hard to talk about all of it. What size tires do we have for this build? I see we have your fender liner kit on yep. it. So we have our OTF kit to cover up the, the engine bay. Once we did the fender trim, we're running 37 inch Toyo MT tires. Wow, 37s. Yep. You guys fit 37s. Yeah, pretty, pretty easily once this long travel kit went on and we trimmed the fenders. So yeah. clearances look pretty dang good right now. And we're on KMC beadlocks. So true beadlock, true beadlock. Yep. Yeah, man. Let's yep. move on to the back. Yep. I know these sliders are new. What do we have here? So these are new rock runner sliders. The goal behind these is basic, minimal design, high clearance. There's no step plate. They're really tighter to the body than our current sliders. So they'll probably be a little cheaper. We wanted something for guys that don't need to get on their roof. You know, just want a slider, want to be able to get DOM, bash them on some rocks rock runner sliders. Dude, hell yeah, I love how tight they are, how Dude, tiny they are, clean. and they look really clean. They do, they do. Oh man. What about this rear bumper? Is this also part of the rock runner setup? Similar to the front, it's modular. So the wings bolt to the center section. This is our plated bedside. We also have a double tube and a single tube. So three options for guys in the rear. Now, this might be more of a challenge to ship via ground. Is this still gonna ship via We're ground? Still gonna try to ship a ground. So, this center section right here, we can get it in a box oh, that that's big. That's amazing. So we, that that's huge for you guys because it's gonna save on shipping and that sometimes you're paying three hundred dollars, yeah. five hundred dollars depending on where you're located. Yep. And something like this uh, is something that's also easier for us to keep in stock, right? Less lead times, ready to ship. That way you guys don't have to wait. And C4, we ship all of our products for free, but because we can ship this ground. It saves us money, so we're going to extend those savings to the customer. We're trying to get really aggressive on pricing for all this stuff. So it'll be cheaper than our current armor. That's we'll nice. get it out quick. It'll ship fast. So happy you guys are doing that. Yeah. What do you guys have for the taillights? Alpha X taillights. Again, they have some kind of a rad startup sequence. They're, they're pretty sweet. Other thing to note, I guess, about this is they're still bracing to the frame up by the wheel well. Oh, and this is solid. The bedside's yeah. not flip. Like, still, we have bedside support brackets. The bumper is shorter, so you can see it kind of ends right at the beginning of the flare yeah. because we know guys with 37s and 40s have to trim the rear. So we didn't want them to have to cut the bumper up, right? So we shortened it. Dude, you right guys away. thought of everything. Yep. Coming into the center section, angled tow hooks. So better departure that way. You can slide right off these things. We have cutouts for S1s. You can see the whole face of this bumper is angled just to try to get maximum departure angle, be able to slide across rocks. I love it, dude. Um, and then bolt in cross member. So this cross member bolts into the frame prior to the center section, so kind of like keep a factory your hitch cross member. On top of that. Still have a hitch. Yep. Flip up license plate. So a lot of the high clearance bumpers on the market right now, they don't allow you to have your full license plate mount. So we wanted to keep that. We know guys, you know, you see them zip tied, bent to crap, license plates everywhere. So you get your full license plate. Dude, then, I am digging this, guys. Yeah. This is the double tube. So, oh, so you got two options here at the event to kind two of Two options it. at the event to showcase it. This is the same straight across bedside cut as the plate. And then if you can imagine it, we'll have a single tube that'll just come down at an angle. So that cut will be a little lower. Oh, uh, so you won't have to cut as much. You won't bedside. have to cut quite as much bedside. And then uh, what do we have for suspension back here? This is looking gnarly and it looks like you have a lot of flex going on. Yeah, so we have 14 inch smooth body, rad flow shocks, archive garage leafs, Archive garage, extended shock towers, King Hydro bumps. The rear's doing a lot of the work right now. <laughs> Archive garage hammer hangers. I need those, dude. I completely bent my. We have their like bolt in cross member to connect them. So obviously it's working great. Wow, their new cross member is beefy, yeah, dude. Beefy. It just used to be a tube. Yeah, it used to be a tube straight across. Now it braces up, get it gets out of the way. So one more thing to touch on. What's this decal right here? And I know we kind of. <laughs> 
you know, we, we brushed up on it a little bit at the beginning yeah, of the video. Yeah. So we want we wanted to have some fun. We're at Overland Expo Mountain West, but this isn't an overlanding truck, so we have our no rooftop tent decal. This is like a rock crawler. It's the rock crawler. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks for showing us around. Is there anything that you think I missed? I don't think so. Be on the lookout. We're going to be getting this truck into some rocks, posting a lot more content with it before we drop it in Black Friday time period. So follow C4, follow along for the ride. We'll showcase it more. It's going to be awesome, guys. I can't wait for this armor to be out in the market. I myself am eyeing it for possibly my truck. Dude, it makes or a me future. want another Tacoma, dude, that's for sure. Man, hell yeah, dude. You guys killed it. Thank Thanks. you so much, Absolutely. man. I'll see you around. Sounds good. All right, fellas. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the top five Toyotas at the Overland Expo Mountain West this year. Let me know down below which one was your favorite rig. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.